As we continue on our study of body systems, we'll now focus on the systems of support, protection, and movement. The first one we'll talk about is the skeletal system, which provides body support and protects the organs. Now, uh, throughout the animal kingdom, there are several different kinds of skeletons. <coughs> In some invertebrates, like cnidarians and some of the worms, we have a hydrostatic skeleton. This is where you have fluid that's under pressure in a closed body compartment, and it gives structure and support to these very um, soft-bodied animals. And others, we have an exoskeleton, like you find in the arthropods. This is a harder external skeleton for protection and muscle attachment. An interesting thing about exoskeletons is the muscles are attached on the inside of the skeleton rather than the outside. And then finally, we have endoskeletons, which is a hard skeleton within softer tissues, <coughs> like we have in other mammals and other vertebrates. The vertebrate skeleton is composed of a number of different kinds of bones. There are two main segments of the skeleton, the axial and appendicular skeletons. The axial is the skull and the um, vertebral column and the rib cage. It's the central part, basically, of the skeleton. And then the appendicular skeleton is the bones of the appendages and the parts that are attaching them to the, ap the axial skeleton, like the pelvic girdle and the pectoral girdle. All vertebral skeletons are variations <coughs> on a basic theme. When you look at a frog skeleton or a uh, lizard skeleton or a uh, bird skeleton. The bones are pretty much the same. They're shaped a little bit differently and there might some of them might be fused together. For instance, in the frog they have, rather than a radius and an ulna, they have a fused bone called a radio ulna. But the basic, the basic theme or the basic pattern is the same in all vertebrate skeletons. <coughs> bones are made of two main parts. There's compact bone, which is the really hard part of the bone, and the spongy part of the bone. And what you have when you have bone is you have bone cells called osteocytes that are embedded in a, in a mineral matrix. And the minerals involved in bones are mostly cartilage, I mean, mostly calcium compounds. There are two kinds of marrow that are found in bones. There's red marrow that um, is found in the spongy bone that produces red blood cells. And then we have the yellow marrow, which is stored fat in the bones. Now, when I said the red blood cells, it also includes some of the um, B cells, for instance, that are made in the bones, um, some of the white blood cells. Bones in vertebrates solidify or ossify from softer, more flexible cartilage, and there's a de deposition of calcium compounds within that cartilage matrix that ossifies or hardens the bones. Now, another thing we have to talk about with this system is ligaments. Ligaments are connective tissue that holds the bones together in joints. And joints allow different types of movement. We have ball and socket joint like you have in your shoulder or your hip that lets you have rotational movement in several different, several different directions. We have a hinge joint as that is found in the elbow and the knee that allows you to move a joint in two directions, two dimensions. And then we have pivot joints like you have also in the elbow and the wrist that allow you to turn a joint in a circle. <clears throat> and so different kinds of joints allow for different kinds of movement. There are also some gliding joints that you find in joints like in the wrist bones that are slightly different than this. <clears throat> the next system in the systems of support and movement is the muscular system. This is made of muscle tissue that can contract when it is stimulated. And there are also connective tissue parts in the muscular system as well, called tendons, which attach muscles to the bones. The bones are basically the levers, and the muscle, muscles are the things that move the levers. There are three types of muscle tissue in humans and other uh, mammals. There's cardiac muscle, which is a striated or striped muscle tissue that has branched cells, and it's found only in the heart. There is smooth muscle that is involuntary muscle tissue found in like the intestines and other uh, organs of the body. And then there is skeletal muscle, which is striated or striped muscle that's attached to the skeleton for movement. Here we have the skeletal muscle, 
that is the striped or striated. This, the stripes are the two different kinds of proteins that glide across one another to allow contraction of the muscle to occur. Notice the long fibers of these striated cells. We have a smooth muscle where you don't see the stripes or striations. You can see the nuclei and they are also in layers and this is for the involuntary contraction of things like the digestive tract. And then we have cardiac muscle which is also striated or striped but the, the uh, rather than being in long thin layers like the skeletal muscle is, the cells are branched, there are uh, joints or um, junctions where the cells connect with each other and there's a lot of interaction between the cardiac muscle. And the, within the cardiac muscle the heart has to contract all at the same time so there are a lot of interconnections make this possible. <coughs> now how muscles contract by moving filaments of two different kinds of proteins uh, past each other. There are thick filaments called myosin and thin filaments called actin. And the con muscles contract when the thin filaments slide along the thick filaments. Something you need to realize about muscle contraction is that it requires energy in the form of ATP. And what happens is that the heads of the myosin molecules attach to the actin filaments and they form cross bridges. And as the ATP is reduced to ADP, the head of the myosin molecule snaps back and that causes movement to occur. <coughs> Here we have the stripes in the muscle that they're divided into segments called sarcomeres. Okay, and there's a dark band and a lighter band. And these are the, the thick filaments, which are the actin, and the thin filaments, which are the myosin. So when a muscle is relaxed, you see uh, the, the bands arranged like this. When the muscle contracts, the thick filaments and th thin filaments fly and slide past each other. And in a fully contracted muscle, they're kind of overlapping here in the middle. And this shows the contracted muscle. <coughs> the next system... Of, this is, goes on to one of, of, support, of protection as well as support is the integumentary system composed of the skin, hair, and nails. The main function of the integumentary system is to keep the body from drying out and it also helps prevent mechanical injury and infection. Another important function of the integumentary system is to help in thermoregulation or maintaining body temperature because after all if we get too hot we sweat, sweat glands are found in the skin, or we shiver and the muscles that, uh, that allow us to shiver are also found in the skin. Now there's also the immune system, which is a system of defense against pathogens, but we've already covered this in a previous unit, so we're not going to cover it in this particular unit. That doesn't mean you don't still need to know about the immune system, but we're not going to have additional work on it in this unit. And that ends the notes on the systems.